Vanessa. Yes, John. Is anyone really happy? Um, or are we just all struggling through shit and then we develop tools to um, help us seek joy, be more calm? Or do you believe that uh, you get to a place where you are consistently happy? Like, like, do you think that happy is an island you swim to and then once you're there, that's it? No, I like to use something I heard Ram Dass say a long time ago about this, um, and this was after his stroke. This is when he was, you know, pretty much incapacitated. And I think it was Oprah that asked him, are you happy? And he said, I'm not happy. I am joyful mm -hmm. in this moment. And that's how he viewed his life. It was like, in this moment, am I joyful? That was his question always. Yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. But it's never, am I happy? That wasn't yeah. ever the question that he asked. And so I, I kind of ascribe to that thinking as well. So many of us are unhappy and we're uh, chasing happy. I know I used to think that if I accomplished something, if I got somewhere, you know, if I got the deal, the house, the girl, whatever it was, then I would be happy. Um, and today, even though generally I am happier, I find myself uh, struggling with being happy I find myself dipping I find myself getting um, you know discouraged depressed I don't live there but after all these years there's a part of me that feels like um, that shouldn't be happening and I mm -hmm. wonder if that's a sign of me being unhappy it's a sign of nothing has changed that I have snapped back I think it's interesting that you are judging yourself and thinking that somehow some way you should have evolved past the point of dipping and not being happy yeah i see those people who um you know they're always happy who are those people like you know sometimes you're just like whether it's you know at the gym or a, a friend that you know or, or someone that every time you see them they're always like skipping in a way and i have two thoughts one i feel like oh i wish i was like that or the other thought is maybe they're not always happy mm -hmm. that they're that there's um, um, that they're they're presenting themselves in that way in public. You know? um, yes, and it might be that they don't even realize that they're presenting themselves like that in public. It might be that they are masters of compartmentalization and um, you know bypassing. Um, I don't mm -hmm. actually believe that anybody is always happy. I think that that is you wouldn't be a human being if that were the case. Um, in order to live a fully human life, you have to be able to feel all of the highs and lows. I don't want to ever be in a place where I don't feel the lows because to me that's not living. Yeah, I, I think it's it's not about... You, you should definitely feel the lows. It's about not living in them. Right, and right. that I think comes from tools and work and um you know self-reflection work and spiritual work and growth and um you know mindfulness work and i think that actually is something that you have to work at i don't think that that comes naturally to human beings i think that you know if you want to get nerdy on it when you talk about like negativity bias and stuff i think that actually we're hardwired to live in the negative mm -hmm. and i think it actually takes work conscious effort to dip in and out of the positive when possible yeah, I mean, life is designed where if you do nothing, um, there is going to be struggle, hardship. You are going to be unhappy, discouraged. You know, we don't compare ourselves with people who have less. We're always comparing ourselves to people who have more. So just living in this world, if you do nothing, um, you, you are going to be in the quicksand. Right, and just living in this world, even if you do, quote unquote, everything, you're still going to have moments when you're in the quicksand. Yeah. Right. And I think that's a good point. Uh, one of the misconceptions about self-betterment, about therapy, about this whole, you know, um, this, this whole uh, uh, evolving, being a better version of yourself thing is that um, happy isn't uh, a constant. Mm -hmm. It's not like you reach it and then you never go back to being unhappy. Uh, I think it's more about um, having the ability through the work that you've done to find more joy in your life, 
to find more meaning in your life, to um, not allow the things that happen to you um, uh, to, 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 to cripple you emotionally, uh, to not run around thinking the sky is falling, the ability to get out of fight or flight, you know, to live in a higher on a higher frequency. Like, I think that's what ultimately what self help is all about. No. Yeah, I mean, I think it's this. It, it brings up in me the like active form of surrender. So when I say the word surrender, most people initially think of it as like giving up, giving up, putting White your hands flag. in the air, yeah, yeah. Um, not being active or doing right. Mm-hmm. And it's not actually the definition of surrender um, in this context, right? The idea of surrender is actually very active. You have to constantly be working on not gripping the steering wheel. You have to constantly be working on recognizing what you do and don't have control over and not white knuckling, to use your term, the things that you really don't have control over, right? You work on and you focus on the things that you do and then the rest of it has to be an active form of surrender because it's this constant chasing our tails, this constant, and I know this very well because I am somebody who has a really hard time with control, um, that's what brings us the negativity. That's what brings us the the down moments. That's what brings us the the quote unquote unhappiness is this perception that we have that we have any kind of control over the things that we don't. So how do you know when to uh, work harder or be assertive or you know um, uh, inject discipline? Um, or when to let go because you're trying to um, fight the universe. Like, how do you? Because that, that's that's the the, the balance, right? Yeah. That's the dance. Um, because if, if you just grind and push and fight, um, that's not going to be healthy. But also, if you just stay home and cross your fingers and just give everything to the universe, then nothing's going to happen either. So, which isn't surrender, right? I mean, that's, that's not yeah, surrender. that's that's a, that's running, that's escaping, yeah. that's not facing, right? So. What's the? How do you know when to do what? I feel like that's an. Uh, it's hard to answer, but I, I feel like for me that's become an active process. So, as somebody who has spent the last, let's say, fifteen years actively working to hone and develop her ability to hear her intuition, because I spent a lifetime not being able to hear it because I was so focused on the external instead of on the internal Mm -hmm. um, for survival, for whatever reasons. Um, I think for me, it's it's an active process of tuning into my body and paying attention to what's happening there and not fighting that. So when I'm working too hard, I have a tendency to like overthink it and, and my body gets shut off. Like I get cut off from the neck down and I can work and I can work and I can work until I put myself into the ground. I'm not like that anymore as much because I have a better ability now to tune in, to check in what's going on beneath the neck, right? Under the head and say, oh, my body feels tense. My body feels exhausted. My body feels not great. My body feels um, restless, whatever it is. What's going on? Let me tune into that. What is it telling me? And usually it's my intuition. It's my gut. It's my body telling me you're grinding you're working too hard, you're not paying attention to your body or your intuition, you need to slow the fuck down in multiple ways usually. Um, you know, you're talking too fast, you're not listening enough, you're moving too quick, you're not thinking things through, like whatever the like uh, push-pull might mm-hmm. be. Um, for me, it's a process of stopping, getting out of my headspace and getting into my body and feeling into what it's trying to tell me. Yeah. And then it's a, it's an, it's a dance, right? Like. Okay, I'll listen. I'll I'll take a step forward in whatever direction, and then I have to step back, and then I take a step forward, and then I take a step back. It's a dance. It's not like okay, now I'm working too hard, or now I'm not working hard enough. It constantly feels like um, an ebb and flow, like a conversation with my body. Yeah. So maybe happy is about learning that dance. Maybe happy is about getting better at that. Yeah. I feel like in our twenties, we are either um, working our asses off. We have a lot of energy. Uh, there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of timelines you know there's ticking clocks and all that that we buy into so our 20s and and our our early 30s are all about that um and then you know after 30s 40s you actually start to slow down you start to reevaluate 
um, you have less energy to do things, you know? Well, you have less of the like external driven energy. Yeah. You have more yeah. of the internal introspective energy, right? right. I mean, it's, it's Jung's theory of first part of life, second part of life. Um, and which, it's not- which I agree with. And let's, let's, uh, if you're listening or watching and you don't know, um, Jung says... It's not to put it, and he doesn't, he actually makes it clear that it's not to be very like dogma rigid. This is always how it is. But right. essentially he theorizes the first half of life. So the, the sun component, the mm-hmm. sun energy component mm-hmm. to your life is externally focused, right? We are uh, focused on, it's very ego driven. Right. It's about making a name. It's about Chasing. creating a family. It's yeah. about being driven. It's external, external, external. And then second half of life. Wait, so the first half of life probably to what? Mid thirties? Well, I mean, we I would to... say, I mean, he would say that's where the midlife crisis is, where right. that peak, you know, happens. And then the descendant descending happens, but that's different for him because he lived in the late 1800s. Yeah, we died so faster. So for us, I mean, midlife could mean a lot of things. Sure. I think, um, you know, maybe forties, maybe early fifties mm-hmm. nowadays. Um, I think for back then, it was probably in the 30s is when that happened. Um, and then the second and half the of second the life. the second part of life is the more lunar energy. Moon. It's uh, more feminine in mm-hmm. nature. It's more internal, more introspective, and it becomes more about um, self. It's less egoic, and it's more unconscious. It's more intuitive-based. It's more feminine energy-based. Um, and I think that's where you see people, again, you go through this midlife crisis and you start to question everything you've done, right? What's it all worth? Mm-hmm. What's it all for? Big, big um, questions. Right. Um, Imploding things in your life, you know, tearing down structures you've built. That's where you see a lot of this happen. Now, the reason why I say it, I think it's important to not put it into specific boxes like that is because I do think, especially nowadays, I've personally witnessed a lot of younger people being able to dip into moon. the more lunar, yeah. intuitive, feminine energy that is required for more of that introspection. It's happening at an earlier age. It's happening at an earlier yeah. age, which thank God, I mean, I'm grateful for that. And also they still have the external energy that people like you and I might not always have yeah. to then maybe go out and make bigger changes in the external, in the collective with what they've learned internally, which is exciting, I think, in a whole other conversation. <laughs> Yeah, I think for me, one of the um, gifts of, of having a child is it forces the moon more so than the sun. So uh, spending time with our daughter, um, and it, you know, it doesn't come naturally. You do have to make an intention, and, and, uh, and I also struggle with putting things away. But um, when I spend time with, with uh, our, my daughter, uh, it's probably the most powerful factor right now that will pull me out of my head and be more present Mm -hmm. you know um, other than my daughter maybe the motorcycle um, but something that stops the whole um, chasing and scoreboard and all that just kind of um, centers me grounds me uh, you know if if I focus on really engaging with her not just you know uh, spending time with her while I'm thinking about something else so that's um, so interesting that you say that because I actually feel like for me it it um, having a child has brought up my struggles that I used to have more, I felt when I was younger with the opposite. So it actually, for me, pushes me, if I'm not careful, into my more masculine planning structure, not being present, thinking ahead, needing to make sure shit's getting done, like always needing to be a step ahead um, versus actually being present. And I have to make a conscious effort um, to dip in and remember that that stuff, like if the dinner doesn't get cooked the right way or a certain way or she doesn't eat a certain thing, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it's fine. But it, but I find it harder to get out of the pull of, of the more masculine go, 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 having a kid now. Why do you think that is? You think that's because um, you take on more of the responsibilities as a parent? Like the, the actual uh, dinner you know, get her shoes on, going to school, like all, all that stuff. And because you have to do that, it keeps you uh, less present, more uh, thinking about planning, preparing, organiz- organizing and all that. Yeah, I mean, I think that it might be a little bit of like the, the delineation of the mental load, which I think shows up a lot in any relationship or dynamic in a household. I think there's usually one person, I mean, I hear women talk about this a lot, like being the carrier of the mental load, right? The planning Mm -hmm. Um, and how it's exhausting, obviously, because you're not 
able to be present because you're always kind of one step ahead. What needs to get done? Does everybody have this? Everybody checklist? Okay, you got your shoes, you got your coat, you got that, you know. Um, and I think the fear is if I don't do that, who will? And I know what your response is, is like, well, then who cares? Like, who cares if she has her coat and her shoes and this and that? Usually that's, you know, where you go with it. But that to me doesn't feel like an okay answer. Like that answer doesn't make me feel like, oh, okay, you're right. I can just stop thinking about it now. Well, I don't think it's always who cares about her, her clothes. I mean, of course, there's uh, basic safety precautions that that are not negotiable but I'm definitely more lenient than you when it comes to, you know, um, does she have her coat? Did she brush it? Like all the stuff that needs to be done. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think our definitions of lenient are different. I think that when I'm saying thinking five steps ahead, two steps ahead, it's like, like yesterday, for example, it was rainy here. So it's like in my head in the morning, I'm not just saying, okay, it's chilly. Let's put her in long sleeves and pants. I'm also thinking, okay, they're going to go outside today. So I need to make sure she has a change of shirt. She needs to have a change of socks because she's going to get wet and she'll be cold. She needs to have her coat. She needs to have her rain boots. And my guess is unless, and I, I'm not saying this to like knock you in any way. It's just like the way our brains work. My guess is, unless there was a li- wasn't a list, or sorry, unless there was a list for you to look at, if you were here by yourself getting her ready for the day, she would probably go to school without that stuff, the extra stuff, the stuff thinking ahead into the future of her day to make sure she's comfortable, kind of stuff. Are you trying to start a fight? <laughs> I'm not. I just this is something we've talked about before. I think more macro. I think you know um, what, what what is the value of her going to this type of school? Um, I think of. You know, uh, like recently, you know, um, creating a uh, um, some kind of, of, of savings or something for her uh, things that she needs. I, I think more macro than the day to day. I don't. I know the day to day is important, but that's just where. Um, or maybe because you focus more in the trenches, then it forces me to fo- focus more on, you know, the bigger things. You know. Um, finances, uh, you know, the big decisions. But I think I'm also involved in the big decisions too. Yeah. Yeah, you're also involved. But I, I, think, it's, uh, I think it's partly style. It matches our, our style and how we are in general. You know, I like to throw her up in the air a lot. It's not something that you like. I think when you see me doing it, it makes you kind of panic. To a certain extent, you're okay with it, but after a certain height, then it becomes dangerous, and then it's like um, I'm hearing the buzzing, uh, the X buzzing on a, that game. Sur- survey says, <laughs> and then you get the X, the, the big X. Um, that appears in your head if she goes a little too high. So... Uh, it's it's style. It's it's uh, opinion. It's like, for example, you know, uh, let's say she throws up uh, on on her bed. For <laughs> you, something that happened, but yes. yeah, she she threw up in her bed. For you, um, any throw up is is definitely uh, a call to action to clean the sheets and all that, of course. But for me, it's like, well, where did she throw up, and where is she now? Is the throw up a little bit on the corner of the bed? I'm kind of okay with that. Is she laying in her throw up? Then of course, then you wake her up. So. Uh, I don't know if it, if there's a wrong or right. I mean, there definitely is a wrong or right with um, some things, um, but we're ta- I think we're talking about style. I think we're talking about you know you. I think are more organized and more you you live your life differently than I live my life. And I think with parenting, what's hard is because the child is something we're both responsible for. It overlaps. So you know the the, the what you do with your life and how you show up in the world is kind of none of my business so I could stay on my side of the fence. And then the way that I maneuver, whether I'm doing wheelies on my motorcycle or you know, doing something, whatever, that, that, that's the way that I live my life. By the way, I don't do wheelies on my motorcycle, I can't. But uh, <laughs> You wish you could. I'm 48. <laughs> I have moon energy now, not the sun energy. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of none of your business until it affects you. When, we, when you have a child, it is your business. It is my, it, it's complete overlap. And so it, it's hard to not take things more personally. And also because the child is 
you know, we, you, you usually put your child above you, meaning the importance and all that. So um, if I'm doing something and it's not what you want or how you see it, it's, it's definitely going to affect you more when it comes to Logan than if it's something, a personal decision that I'm making for me. Yeah, I think that in my experience personally, but also in like conversations with women that I've had, I don't necessarily think that that we want, I'm speaking generally here, I don't think we want, I don't think I want, I'll speak for myself, um, you to be like me. I actually think a lot of times what would solve some of the like, um, oh, what's the word? Like, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess it doesn't really solve the feeling of, of kind of being burnt out or tired or feeling maybe resentful that I'm not able to like connect in a grounded, mindful way as often as I'd like because my mind is always going a mile a minute or whatever it might be. I don't think it's actually about you being like me. I actually think it's more about a, a direct, verbal, eye-to-eye -eye called out recognition of all of the mental gymnastics it actually takes to keep things running well. So even if you don't agree necessarily, like if, even if you think that like I'm chasing my tail and I'm just worrying for the sake of worrying or I'm just being anxious for the sake of being anxious. I mean, bottom line is like somebody's making sure that there's always toilet paper. Somebody's making sure that the dish soap never runs out. Somebody's making sure that Logan's always got clean socks or yeah, but you, like you, that, like that thinking ahead. Yeah, during, but you know what? Um, I've lived on my own before. I know you are. I'm talking about now that we've got three people in the house. What? Well, I'm saying, so it goes back to style. So um, I've lived on my own, and I may buy toilet paper when there's one more roll left, right? For you, that may bring you a lot of discomfort and anxiety, and you will buy toilet paper when there's one more bag left, right? So that ripples into how we raise, that ripples into everything. So um, I don't think it's a, a right or wrong. I think it's, uh, if you choose to do, you know, look at things uh, way in advance, because that's your style and that's what brings you less anxiety and you organize everything, for example, on the calendar, that's a way, a way of maneuvering in the world and that's okay but it would be unfair to have someone else do, do, do it that way. But that's exactly what I just said I did not want. I just said it's not about you being like me or doing what I do. Well, you said a, a cold stare in the eye or something. No, looks like you didn't even listen to what I, I just said. I did listen said. to you, just because I can't, I don't remember what the exact <laughs> words you said. Doesn't mean I you literally to repeated you. back exactly what I said I didn't say. You said a cold stare in the eye or something like that. I did not say a cold like stare. I you said, said what I don't want is for you to be like me or do things like me. Yes, okay? I, know, I heard that part. Okay. Yeah, but you said something I about say, eye I think contact. What a, I think what a lot of people who feel the way that I feel would actually benefit from or would really enjoy is a direct eye contact recognition of all of the things, the mental gymnastics that we do to keep things running smoothly so sure. that the people in our lives don't ever have to have not like not have toilet paper or like not have warm socks to change into when they're wet from being outside where you might think that's trivial and I'm just chasing my tail but I'm constantly looking ahead not just for myself it's for the people in my life that I love to make sure that they're always looked out for and taken care yes, of yes but that statement also implies that I don't do anything no, it does not. You're, I think you're, you're personalizing my statement. I'm talking about me and only me. You're now taking it and making it about you. I'm saying, from my perspective, what would feel nice is a recognition sure. of just that. That doesn't minimize in any way what you do. By giving somebody else credit, that doesn't take away your credit. So what would that recognition uh, look like? The verbal one? Sure, I mean, it could. I mean, it could be like, I don't know, we plan, we're planning for a trip, right? And it's like, I mean, you see the way that I do checklists and especially Logan stuff, like traveling with a kid, if you guys don't have kids, is a, I mean, it's just, it's so much, it's so much. I love it and it's so much. It could look like a, hey, you know what? I, I, I really appreciate how you handle packing for Logan. I know that's actually a lot of work and it takes a lot of like mental load to do that and I appreciate it, period, that's it. Right. That's all, I don't think that takes away from you at all. Is, is there, I, I have no problem saying that. I, and I actually do appreciate um, you checking the list 
uh, making sure the you know the 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 T's are crossed. The sound uh, machine, the this, the that, you yeah, know, just yeah, all shit. Yeah, absolutely. Is there a version of that with me being the way that I am? What do you mean? Is is there a, uh, any appreciation in the way that I maneuver through the world, or the way that I am with Logan, or the stuff, or is it more like, well, what you do is I don't agree with you know what I'm no, saying? No, I think that there actually is, but I think that by by diverting away from what I just said and then asking about what about me, that actually just minimizes what I just asked Well, of about. course, but I just said I do appreciate. But can we just stop there? Can that be enough for this moment, for a beat, and then we can turn the conversation around? Yeah, but because feels, we're recording. I know, but can't. it just feels, it feels minimizing. So like if I express something, if I express a need, or if I express like this would actually feel good, by you saying, yeah, sure, but what about me? It, it feels very minimizing about what I'm talking about is what I'm saying. Right. So like, yes, we can, that's 100% accurate and we can go there. I just, a beat on that point that I made before we go there would, is, would be appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. But that beat, because we're doing a podcast episode, I'm not saying a can't si- be an hour and a half. I'm not saying a silent beat. I'm just saying... You're saying save that for a next conversation. For a different conversation. Well, it's kind of like when people apologize and then they say but, right? It's like it feels a little bit negating of what came before the but. That's what it feels like for me. You can't see the beat that he's taking right now. No, I'm just thinking about it. No, I, I agree with you. I think for me the reason why... I think it's because this is this is not a, a, a first conversation. It's definitely a hinting to, um, or you have hinted to, um, basically what you're saying is I want you to appreciate everything that I do. When it comes to um, Logan, logistics, you know, well, prepping for stuff. Even if that's what that was what I was saying, which even the tone that you said, it made it seem like I was being kind of vicious in the way I was saying it but even if that's exactly what I was saying is yeah. there something wrong with that no no there isn't but yeah. there, there's you, it's, I feel like you've been hinting at that a lot uh, and I I do appreciate what you do and for the most part I do know that you that you do I think it's just a, I think we both I mean I, I know that I do the same it's like I think in any partnership, what happens is I think we, everybody, I think we all get a little too comfortable in our roles and we, we stop acknowledging. And and I'm saying this for myself too. We stop acknowledging and actually putting effort into telling our partner the things that we appreciate, right? Like not the, like, you look really beautiful today, like those kind of things, but like the actual tangible, Hey, you know what? Like, you know what, John, I really appreciated this morning how you handled getting her to school we had we had to manage another ride because i had a doctor's appointment like i actually really appreciate that you just had handled that right it almost seems like i don't know if silly is the right word but it's like because it's like a, a moment to moment thing it almost seems like it's not worthy of recognizing and i actually think that that is something that couples do wrong i actually think that we should work on rather than the big things the micro things like recognizing in the moment hey i really appreciate the way you handled that you know it made me feel really insert whatever here like taken care of it made me feel like you've got this I didn't have to worry about it I knew she was handled she was taken care of school was good right and so I guess that's what I'm saying it's like I actually think I, I have to get better at that too I think all couples slide yeah I think uh, I think for me the reason why I feel defensive is I don't feel like I get a lot of credit for the bigger stuff because they're kind of given because it's you know what I'm saying? So, um, the, the 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 macro, whatever the you know, things that need to get paid, or you know, things that aren't like changing a diaper. So, do you feel like because I know that I say to you, you know, I've said things like, "Hey, I'm really proud of you." Like, I really I see how hard you work. Like, I appreciate how hard you work for us. Like, I have said those words. Do you feel like you need to hear them more? Yeah, I mean you've said that, and but and I and and and, and I I've said, you know, uh, appreciate you for this or that. I, I don't know if it's more, but I I I feel like 
the theme of the things that happen day to day and the things that need to get done I think there's a lot more weight on that and value on that and it's easy to not see um, the bigger things because the bigger things usually aren't immediate because the bigger things are in the distance uh, so the the day-to-day -day is more in our faces it's more urgent it's more you know and so it's easy for that to feel like it has more value than some of the, the, the macro stuff when it comes to life, responsibilities, you know, all of that. I guess I'm going back to, again, why it feels like by me saying, you know, I do want more, let's say, verbal recognition for the micro, why that feels to you like I'm saying that I'm minimizing your macro. Like I'm wondering why they can't both be true. Like why why both of us can't also I, I can't think desire they are, they are recognition both for both sides, like the macro and the micro, right? And like why one person desiring that somehow minimizes the other. Because that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like by me asking for that, it's translating to you like I think what I do is more important. And that's not actually what I mean at all. Well, I feel like that's more of a topic that comes up more so than anything about the macro. It seems like the micro is what we talk about more. We don't talk about the macro much or, you know, what, what, what people do or, or appreciation for that. We talk a lot about um, what's happening in the day to day. But I get it because what's happening in the day to day is what we remember and it's what we're living in. Mm -hmm. We don't sit and talk about like, you know, uh, life insurance or stuff like that because they're not urgent. They're things that are in the distance. Or thinking about planning future planning or, you know, yeah, stuff in the future. I don't know. Maybe also it is more important. Uh, maybe at this time when, you know, your child is two, um, the, the micro, the day-to-day -day is more important. And then when your child is 15 or becoming an adult, then maybe the, the macro conversation is more important. Maybe, or I don't know, maybe neither of them are actually more important. I think they're both equally important. And what it sounds like is maybe neither of us feel like the other person is recognizing the other person for doing what they're doing. I don't know that one is more important than the other. Yeah. But it sounds to me like both of us are personalizing and feeling as though we're not being appreciated by the other person for the roles that we're playing. And then by with that feeling of not being appreciated, becomes there, there comes defensiveness and feeling as though the other person thinks what they're doing is more important. Well, I don't, I don't feel unappreciated. You know, what, you know what I think I feel is I feel like I do a lot in the micro, in the day-to-day, -day, in, uh, and it's more assisting and allowing you to lead when it comes to like getting her ready for school, brushing her teeth, all of that. I, I more take the position of where can I help instead mm -hmm. of leading, mm -hmm. but I do that on purpose. Mm -hmm. I think things go smoother that way, and I don't think I get credit for that. Instead, if I was to lead, I would then get credit. So if I was to take more initiative, then that would give me the points. If I don't take initiative but just support and assist, then it feels like I'm being written off. Like it feels like that doesn't count. But the way that I look at it is because you know what she wants, you know, what to make for lunch and all of this stuff, you just go at it and then I try to assist and help in the way that I can. If you're not here, then by default, I have to do it, which is, which is fine. But when you are here, it's like too many cooks in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. If we're both making her lunch, we're, we're gonna disagree on what we make her. Mm -hmm. If we're both, you know, whatever it is, brushing her teeth, uh, giving her, we all do things differently. So, with the day-to-day, -day, I just try to kind of get out of your way 
but then also trying to make an effort to help you and assist you. Mm -hmm. If I get out of your way and don't assist you, then that's different because mm -hmm. then you're alone. So I, I think I feel like assisting you is not enough yeah. or it's it's not the same I don't get the same credit because I'm not leading I'm sitting with what you're saying and thinking only because I feel like what I was trying to express and maybe wasn't clear in my expression was a desire for um a desire for like a, a recognition or a validation in in the in the day to day, or like in the running of the ship kind of thing in the day to day. Sure. Um, not necessarily in in this moment. Not necessarily in wanting you to to quote unquote do more, because I do actually think that you do more. I think we have had conversations, and I think you do and are better at being present in the mornings and helping me and assist in, to in your words assisting me. And I'm not actually, I actually don't have anything to say about that. I actually think that you you do, quote unquote, assist me in the morning and, and do, and that's great. And I, I don't actually have anything about that. Um, I don't actually see them as the same thing. So I guess I'm, I guess maybe I wasn't clear in my expression or maybe I'm just confused. But um, I think that maybe both things, both can be a need. Does that make sense? both things can be a need like a desire for a recognition and also a desire for assistance does that feel invalidating saying assistance I don't like that word yeah I, I, I know you're saying you want recognition for the, the stuff that you do do day to day and all that it takes to run the ship raise a child get the child to school uh, and I get that. I I, I, uh, I do value that. I, I I do feel like you're an amazing mom, and I couldn't I couldn't do this w without you. Um, I mean, I think maybe what you want is me to verbalize that more. Because I, I, I haven't moments, I haven't said it in a long time. You know? I think in the moment. I and I think maybe that's how we're wired differently. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm assuming. But I think for me sometimes the using like a, the packing or something again as the as the analogy here like the packing starts a week ahead of time <laughs> it gets done we get to the airport we board the plane the snack bag comes out logan sits down we take a breath and in that moment you say i appreciate all the shit that's gone into the last week and, and we're here and we're good and logan's take you know all of her toys and her snacks and everything's great and we're good right like in that moment i think that specific appreciation feels more like being seen in the moment versus more of like a I appreciate you and all you do like that to me and, and I'm not minimizing that but to me that feels almost like sometimes I can feel like a throwaway almost like I, I know I should say this so I'm going to and I'm not saying that's your intention versus like very specific in the moment of like it, hey I see this thing that you it, just did does that make sense yes it's hard to say that in the moment yeah because there's so much urgency because we're rushing. Well, that's why I say, you know like, let's like, say in that example, it's like we're on the plane, the snack bag comes out, we're sitting down, we're like on well, the other side. Well, almost. that's <laughs> when you have that's when you have time to say things like that. Yeah. If you're if we're late and we're have anxiety well, sure. and you're panicking, nobody's your appreciating shoes, anything in that moment. <laughs> it doesn't feel right for me to say, hey, let's stop. I want to say, I, 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 no, I mean, I guess I, it can, but it, yeah, but that doesn't. No, I agree with you. It's That's hard why to I'm say saying that. it's on the other side, it seems like, is, is the moment where you go, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I also wonder if when, you know, the other pattern with us is when, when you are doing something and you got your checklist and you're like kind of like off and running, um, you know, we've talked about like the fight or flight the anxiety and how that affects me and how it affects each other. I sometimes want to just get out of the way because I feel like that's the best thing to do. And by me getting out of the way, it could seem like, oh, he's not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to participate in like panic but then from you, it may seem like, oh, he's... You're bailing. I'm bailing. 
It's but not we, that I'm bailing. But we've talked about that, and I think banging in the recording. I think what we've talked about is this idea of sometimes you showing up in the moment of my like tizzy and saying, what can I do, is enough sometimes to diffuse my anxiety and probably the story that I'm already in my head around, which is like, I'm doing this all by myself because that's obviously the story that I go to. And then you get mad while you're doing it. But yes, but right? but this is like what we've talked about of like um, depersonalizing. So like me getting into like the planning tizzy, got to get things done, we're in a rush, whatever, is nothing personal about you. Um, deep right. personal. I that's, your, that's your style. Right. That's right. And, and so saying, I, what can I do in that moment makes me feel like you see me right. and you're connecting with right. me. And, and then, I, and then I'm, I'm not in that story But I, that I consciously have noted and I, I feel like done. I do that more. Yeah, you have. I do say, okay, what needs to happen? Yep. What can I do? And before, I don't think I did a lot of that. Mm -mm. So I think the reason why I was defensive when what you're looking for is me to validate um, all that you do is because the things that I do now, like I do ask, what can I do in this moment? How can I help you? Whatever. Um, I feel like that equals it's different but it's still the, the, the work that is shared I, I feel like we're doing it together and so when you say can you validate me which is fair I mean I can't argue with that of, of course it, it's that what I'm hearing is you're not doing anything. I am. How come you don't see that? Which may not be accurate, but that's what it feels like. Well, right, and that's why I'm asking you, and I, I'm I'm sitting here and I'm telling you that that's not what I'm saying. So that's the story you're telling yourself from what you're hearing, but as the person who's saying it, I'm telling you that's not what I'm saying. No, that's not what you're saying, like literally. No, but I'm saying that's not what I'm saying figuratively either. Like I'm telling you that's not what I'm saying. So in this moment, that's a story you're telling yourself. Like, I, I'm not a part of that story because I'm not saying that. I don't not appreciate the things that you do. I don't see what you do as lesser than I do. I'm not saying that by me asking you for validation, I'm somehow thinking that what you do isn't enough. Like, none of, that's not what I'm saying. So in that moment, I guess all I'm, all I'm asking is like, like that that's a storyline that you have because like I'm I'm not participating in that story like I promise you that's not what I'm saying yeah like I'm simply asking that both things exist together right like we stand shoulder to shoulder and and you still help and whatever in the ways that you are and you've been doing better about in those moments where I get worked up saying okay what can I do right which helps me get out of my storyline and also, I'm just asking that once in a while, on the other side of the hump, to be present in the moment and say, hey, that was a bit crazy back there, and I appreciate you know, everything it took to get us to this point over the hump or whatever. I do think, um, and we have, to, we have to end, so I gotta bring it back. Uh, by talking to couples and, 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 and a lot of um, uh, um, um, people who are, uh, raising children and having um, difficulty and feeling, you know, unappreciated or uh, alone, uh, which is very common. I do agree that the moms, whether you're doing a career or, or a stay at home, it doesn't matter, um, generally speaking, um, don't get the recognition of all the things that they do, I have I have a client I have a couple uh, who are have been separated, um, and he is now realizing because she's not there, all the stuff that she has done, and and um, well, it's one of the revelations, um, and, and and appreciating. So I think that's that is common in, uh, and and maybe it's you know society or maybe it's. Um, programming where we feel like oh that's what you know a mom should do mm -hmm. it's it, you know um, 
so that that is a, that is kind of a problem uh, uh, as far as with couples and 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 especially um, marriages where you have a child or you have a couple of children and then the roles that we take on and I think generally speaking uh, not all not always but generally speaking um, the moms are underappreciated and the amount of work that it takes to even get through the day um, is a lot and a, lo- a lot of times um, there's a lot of assumption on that's just that's just their job mm-hmm. and I, I don't think that's fair appreciate that yeah thank you for listening be well